Hello and welcome to this edition of Market Guru. Joining me now is Elroy Lobo of uh, Kotak Mutual Fund. Thanks very much, uh, Elroy, for coming by on the show again. Uh, when we last spoke, which was back in December, I remember you predicted, and rightly so, uh, you talked about the earning cycle for FI13 back then, and you said 10%. Very few would have believed you back then, but I think now most experts seem to be veering towards that. Uh, how would you be looking now at what has transpired in the last six months, and we'll talk a little more in detail about uh, what we spoke. But first up, what really would be the way you would look at the market right now? I think the first point to note, uh, Vivek, is the fact that uh, the growth profile of India has clearly slowed down, and growth expectations now need to be reset. Uh, we are clearly going to be growing below potential growth rate, not only for this year, but also for the next year. Uh, my sense is that a sub-7% growth rate is what uh, you need to now you know, factor into all your estimates. Uh, what this also means is that this will result in an earnings growth profile, which will not be very buoyant for this year as well as for the next year. In fact, the June quarter results, in my opinion, will be defining uh, because you have the impact of you know, a weak currency and you have the impact of a slowing growth going to be reflected in earnings numbers. Uh, so it's unlikely to see an uh, earnings upgrade coming into, uh, in, into, you know, st uh, into various companies' earnings. And uh, this means that uh, it would actually cap the kind of upside uh, one would have for markets. Uh, on the micro side, I would say things have clearly weakened. Uh, you are clearly seeing the receivable cycle you know, has elongated for most companies. And a lot of companies are under stress either because of currency or because of the fact that they're not able to pass in the increased cost uh, to the consumers because of intensive you know, competition. And therefore, we will find an earnings growth profile, uh, which is unlikely to be you know, very strong for this year as well as for the next year. On the macro side, uh, clearly there are many, many variables, and not only in India, but also globally. Uh, internationally, my view is very clearly that things haven't really settled down. There is still you know, pain uh, that Eurozone is going through. Uh, I don't think uh, policy announcements in the Euro uh, summit uh, are easy to implement. And one would have to give them time uh, to muddle through you know, some of the issues that they have been speaking about. As far as the local uh, issues are concerned, very clear there's a lot of optimism post the presidential elections and the, you know, like, and the forthcoming vice president elections that reforms would be back on track. I would say that we need to wait and watch. But the whole market now is banking on policy momentum, not only in India, but also globally. And uh, in all probability, you know, as the quarters unfold, you were likely to perhaps see disappointment rather than you know uh, any kind of major positive surprise. Alroy, I remember you told me back then that you expect India's GDP growth to bottom out somewhere in the middle of 2012. So do you believe this 5.3 number that we saw is perhaps the worst? I would say that June quarter is the quarter where we're looking at the year-on-year -year growth rate and GDP profile actually bottoming out. But that does not mean you're going to see an acceleration of you know, a major magnitude. It would remain in a very, very narrow band. It will sort of inch up. Uh, and part of it would be due to base effect issues. Uh, and you could end up uh, anywhere between about 6 to 6.2% uh, in terms of real GDP growth rate for uh, this uh, fiscal year, uh, which is far below the potential GDP growth rate. Now, uh, the reason for this is clearly the fact that we haven't really seen too much done on the investment side or the infrastructure side. And uh, my sense is that issues uh, related to this sector are you know, fairly structural in nature. And just uh, you know, policy change in the interim is unlikely to change you know, the uh, reality on the ground. Uh, even a rate cut is unlikely to move, this, uh, uh, move investments uh, you know, uh, very strongly because uh, some of the issues are very structural in nature. So therefore, our view is clearly that while growth will be tepid, uh, we could see the bottoming of growth in the June quarter, but, the, but uh, uh, it will start inching up uh, very marginally as we progress through the quarters of this fiscal year. You talked of rate cuts, Elroy, and I remember even back then you were of the view, again, fairly contrarian if I may say so back then, that you were of the view that RBI would actually pause for some time when most of the market was actually anticipating very strong cuts. And that's... Uh, Actually, what has not happened, the RPI has actually gone, like you said, uh, and been fairly careful and circumspect about the manner in which it has cut rates. What's your own feeling now? Do you think uh, it would continue with that kind of a stance, given the fact that it's still uncomfortable with inflation? Or do you think some kind of cuts are on the anvil? 
I would say that the uh, central focus of the uh, Reserve Bank of India would be first on exchange rate, uh, then inflation and then growth. Uh, if you were to go in that order, it looks very unlikely that you have too much flexibility to cut interest rates. Our base case assumes that over the next uh, 9 to 12 months, you could see about a 50 basis points you know, uh, cut in interest rates, but it will be more calibrated rather than being very aggressive. Growth needs to be clearly falling off a cliff for them to be very aggressive on interest rate cuts. Inflation continues to be high. Our exchange rate you know, continues to be you know, weak, uh, uh, despite the fact that there is expectation that in fiscal 2013, we will see uh, perhaps a better you know, current account deficit than what we saw last year coming on the back of uh, lower oil prices or the fact that you know, gold imports uh, would be slowing down. But unless growth really moves up, the capital account doesn't really get stronger. And that is the key indicator. We need to get growth up for money to come in on a sustained basis into the Indian capital market. You know, when we last spoke, we were about 40% uh, down as a market in dollar terms. We closed last calendar year around that kind of a number. We saw huge inflows coming in into Jan, Feb. Today, we are about 6.5% uh, up in dollar terms from year to date, uh, Alroy. From a purely valuation perspective, because I remember last time you told me that 15,000 was a level which, according to you, was a key level at which perhaps there could be an entry point. How, on the valuation side, have things changed and how would you look at it? I would say on the, you know, if you look at just headline numbers in terms of uh, price earnings multiples, the Indian market is not uh, overduly, you know, uh, sort of stretched. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that the trigger for valuations to you know, uh, uh, be a kind of a trigger for markets to move up is clearly the uh, you know, improvement in the return ratios of companies. Uh, if you have seen over the last few years, uh, the return ratios of Indian companies have actually trended down and the cost of capital has actually moved up. So the spread between return and uh, the cost has actually narrowed. And we need to see that trend changing for a, you know, a more sustainable uh, re-rating of markets. Till then, uh, I don't think you know, we can only look at the headline P numbers uh, without looking at what's happening to cash flows, what's happening to return ratios. Unless these change you know, positively, it's only then uh, that you will see uh, a positive you know, uh, interest that, is, that uh, investors would have on the market. We've seen a recent uh, pickup in FII investments uh, coming in, uh, Elroy. Of course, nowhere close to what we saw in Jan, Feb, but still a certain sense of positivity. How would you explain that? Would you explain that as valuation? Would you explain that as the currency? Would you explain that as liquidity? Or would you explain that as the point that you made earlier in this interview, that there is somewhere hope and expectation that reforms might actually start and the government might start walking the talk? I would say that if you were to decompose the flows that have come in the recent past, it's clearly you know, been largely ETF-led. If you were to uh, look at the FI flows, uh, you will actually see that the uh, net flows from uh, long-only funds have actually been negative. Uh, so though we have seen you know, some amount of positive flows in June, the fact of the matter is that it has been very, very largely, in fact, entirely you know, uh, ETF-led. The second uh, point you need to know that there have been a number of deals which have happened in the financial sector, uh, where you have seen some element of uh, a move from FDI to FII, and that could have also you know, showed up the FII numbers uh, in the recent past. The volumes in the market continue to be sluggish. Uh, the uh, long-only funds have yet to come in, you know, in, in size, and unless you know, uh, that changes, uh, the composition of flow changes, it's unlikely to see, like I said, you know, a more sustained uh, you know, up move in the markets, and that will come on the back of the fact that investors are getting positive on growth bottoming out and therefore, you know, an upturn or the fact that return ratios, you know, would be stronger going forward. Do you believe uh, we've seen the worst of the rupee depreciation, Alroy, or do you think that uh, uh, things could get worse from here on? I would say that, uh, you know, uh, to some extent, uh, uh, a depreciating rupee does set in play, you know, in play a set of variables uh, which actually tend to you know, self-correct some of the macro imbalances. For example, when the rupee you know, uh, weakens, imports normally become expensive and therefore uh, you will find that import growth you know, tends to slow down. Exports become you know, cheaper and you normally find a stronger export growth. So that itself results in a, you know, a corrective uh, 
uh, element in the current account deficit and you will see that playing out in this particular fiscal year where you could see current uh, you know account deficit uh, moving down from 4% plus to somewhere closer to 3 to 3.2% uh, but that's on the current account side of the equation like i said the rupee will be uh, very much uh, you know uh, dependent on uh, what happens to the capital account uh, what we are seeing right now is a lot of interest in emerging market debt and india is no exception and uh, if you go out right now, uh, you'll find a lot of interest uh, of institutional investors in Indian debt paper. And that's because uh, if you look at, for example, pension funds, you know, their liability growth is growing much faster than, you know, the asset growth. And they're looking at about 7 to 8 percent dollar returns with low volatility. They are not willing to take a risk on equities at this point in time, uh, but they don't mind taking, you know, a bet on emerging market debt where, you know, returns are to some extent, you know, locked in. Uh, currency is the only you know variable that would keep them away but otherwise uh, you know they are looking at uh, uh, you know emerging market debt more favorably and India is no exception I remember back then when I asked you Alroy about what your portfolio strategy would be you mentioned that uh, there were two or three big events that you would look at at that point of time when of course was uh, what was really going on on the schedule of payments the debt payments in the eurozone you talked about the budget coming up back then uh, however, you said at that point of time, your strategy was still tilting towards defensives. Uh, how has that changed now? I would say that, you know, uh, uh, defensives continue to be our, you know, core strategy. Uh, only thing is that the composition of defensives would change depending on, you know, where they currently trade at. Uh, there was a time when you were getting, you know, reasonable upside on consumer stocks and therefore they posed a fantastic, you know, uh, defensive play. The consumer stocks have become, you know, fairly rich and you're seeing a lot of stocks actually now uh, where the risk reward is clearly, you know, in favor. So perhaps, uh, you know, while defensiveness continues to be, you know, a core strategy, uh, the, the composition of the defensives, you know, uh, may change, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, please understand that, you know, uh, there are issues out there in Eurozone. Uh, they could get pretty murky. Uh, you know, Spain is clearly not resolved. All the manifestos talked in the EU summit. Uh, seem to be more manifestos rather than, you know, hardcore implementation. The earliest, in case something happens down there, would only be somewhere around December, Jan, and that too looks, you know, a little improbable. Uh, so one has to factor that in uh, when you construct portfolios because uh, the risk on trades are now becoming very short. And, uh, you know, you could get trapped by, you know, uh, increasing beta in the portfolio uh, and then, you know, uh, trying to sort of, you know, shake it off uh, when markets go into a risk-off mode. Uh, so I think the key is, you know, playing good companies, playing risk reward, looking at valuations very closely, return ratios, cash flows, etc. And, you know, building a very, very strong portfolio which can sort of, you know, battle these kinds of volatility in the markets. So other than defensives, Alroy, are there any other sectors out there which are looking interesting to you? I remember when we went into this year, everybody was extremely bullish on the banking and financial services space. Uh, that uh, doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Uh, any other sectors that you're liking at this point of time, apart from the usual, uh, you know, the ones you've already talked about, the whole defensive space? I would say that, you know, there are quite a few sectors uh, where we are positioned uh, positively on. Uh, we are, for example, in the infrastructure space, we seem to be having a very, you know, uh, positive bias on the cement space. I think after the recent, uh, you know, CCI order, a lot of the, you know, overhang on this sector seems to be, you know, uh, now out of the way and uh, these uh, companies in this sector continue to report you know pretty decent cash flows and we think this is a sector you know which could do well over the next two to three years so cement is clearly you know one which we are positive on on the banking space i would say that we are still biased more towards private sector rather than uh, public sector companies uh, we are actually seeing you know uh, the potential for the mpa cycle to still you know uh, give you a negative surprise and in that context we think private sector banks are a better place than the you know uh, public sector banks uh, and even within the private sector banks uh, we are actually you know uh, taking a very hard look at uh, actual exposures uh, before basically overweighting you know the relative stocks in the portfolio uh, as far as uh, pharmaceuticals are concerned uh, uh, we have been very selective uh, they are clearly you know benefiting from the uh, exchange rate uh, but that is one sector where we believe that uh, you know the uh, uh, any kind of uh, slowdown globally uh, would have a relatively lesser impact on the pharmaceutical sector than perhaps, say, you know, the IT sector. So within the, you know, export bag, uh, we normally find uh, 
uh, it better to play the pharmaceutical sector vis a vis the IT sector. So, IT sector we are underweight and pharmaceuticals, you know, uh, we continue to remain overweight. In the uh, consumer space, uh, we did see a lot of value in the uh, in the in the in consumer you know companies which were down the market cap curve, uh, but over the last you know, few months they too have you know significantly outperformed, and we will be taking a you know a review of the portfolio at this point in time. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, you know there is a slowdown across the board, uh, be it on the investment side or be it on the consumption side. It's just that uh, the uh, consumption uh, you know trends are likely to at least be far more resilient. Uh, and you need to pick your companies in that space uh, where there's relatively, you know, uh, uh, the elasticity of demand is is relatively less compared to, you know, what you normally see uh, in, com in perhaps, you know, consumer discretionary, you know, kind of uh, names. Uh, so we are taking a very hard look on that sector, but we still like uh, a lot of companies more, you know, down the market cap curve uh, than the large cap, uh, you know, uh, ones in the sector. All right, Alroy, we leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, like always, for coming by and sharing your perspective with our viewers. Thank you. All right, that was Alroy Lobo on Market Guru. We take a quick break, but lots more coming up here on Bloomberg UTV.